Everything was rosy for the devil in Tasmania until 1996, then the disease hit. There was a quarter of a million of them then. Now they'd be lucky to be 20,000. It's a terrible death because the tumor ends up creating so much massive trauma that the animal can't eat or drink. About that time, if it can eat or drink, it's the, the, the tumor, there's an, it spreads to lungs, brain, rest of the body, uh, and it's just awful. By 2003, when it became apparent that extinction was a strong possibility, the Australian Zoos Association joined forces with the official Save the Tasmanian Devil program to establish a viable insurance population that would be genetically and behaviourally suitable for reintroduction to the Tasmanian landscape when the time is right. In 2006, the Australian Reptile Park embarked on an audacious conservation project on behalf of the overarching program to establish a very large consolidated population of Tasmanian devils in free-range enclosures on the Australian mainland, away from the ravages of devil facial tumour disease. This is Devil Ark. In mid-2010, construction began on Devil Ark. Up to 20 men toiled from dawn to dusk, living rough in the mighty Barringtons. The weather was extreme, with up to 60 inches of rainfall. Progress on the site became laborious. The ball is in our court now. We're beginning to build the earliest part of Devil Ark. Uh, this is going to take 25 years of uh, development and maintenance of up to 1,500 Tassie Devils. We say 1,000, 1,500 is a bit scary, but um, we started on a good foundation. The property is very much Tasmania-like, 1,300 meters elevation, cold, lots of snow in the winter, perfect. Ten isolated pens for holding individual devils for short periods away from their social groups were built. Over here is the beginning of the free-range enclosures. They extend over, oh, probably about a 50 hectare area to begin with. The whole property is 500 hectares and we'll be growing into that over the next five to six years. One metre deep fencing foundation ditches were dug through rocky ground. Once again, progress was slowed by rain and deep mud. More than eight kilometres of secured perimeter fencing was erected. This is one of the free range pens. This particular one is two hectares and our aim is to make it as naturalistic as possible, um, have suitable birthing sites for females. We're going to stock it with densities of devils that will mean that they are in a, a natural state, comfortable, um, mixed sex ratios and staggered age structures. I think that it just could not be better. It's early morning now and today is the launch. So we could have a couple of hundred people here all to see devils be released into these big pens. The first 40 devils to be released have been in transit from Tasmania for 20 hours. The devils selected for Devil Ark have been in quarantine for over a year and are disease free. Although Devil Ark is not open to the public, the local community was invited to witness the release of the 40 Tasmanian devils. Thank you everybody for coming. It's kind of a, an emotional moment for Tim and the guys and myself. Tim, who's probably put more into this project than anyone, gets the honor of the ceremonious release of the first Tassie Devil. Ready to put him down? Okay, you ready? We've just released the bulk of the devils now into the facility, so it's been an incredible day. I just can't wait. From this point on, we go back to zookeepers and we care for devils, and that's incredible. We've seen this site come from, from nothing, a patch of bush, to a facility, to hard work, blood, sweat, tears and rain. Uh, and now we've got devils mating. It's what we're here for. It's been just four months since the Devils were introduced into Devil Ark. 
The Devil Social Groups are well established in the big free range pens. A night camera is set up to observe devil socialising at a night feed. Okay, so this is a food item for the night yep. and we feed carcasses as they would eat in the wild. So this is kangaroo and what's going to happen is I can already see a devil or two here. They're going to come in and it's beautiful because you see a little devil pop through, nose in the air and that's all you can see above the grass and then you see your head sniff and they'll work their way in. A social feed for devils where they come together and eat, that's what devil art is. Devils are incredibly strong and their bite is legendary. The kangaroo carcass is no match for a ravenous devil. Devils, they sleep by themselves but they come together and they socialise. So we're going to see squabbles and little arguments and that's all developing for when they're adults. Everything that we do tries to maintain as many wild and natural behaviours as possible so that if the offspring and the offspring and the offspring get released into Tasmania, they're wild. This is what it looks like when 10 devils have had a dinner party. They have chewed straight through leg bones, hip bones, all the ribs along here. Their jaw just is incredibly strong. I didn't think that they would get through this much kangaroo. It's, it's a lot of meat that's been consumed there. By mid-June, the deep, icy, alpine cold of the Barrington Tops has set in. The Tasmania-like climate is a result of the 1,350 metre high elevation of the site, a truly alpine environment and ideal for Tasmanian devils. It's an important day at Devil Ark, the outcome of which could have a huge impact on the future planning of the entire project. Right. It's the middle of winter, it is freezing, it's minus two, it's very early morning, there's ice everywhere, and overnight we've trapped a yard of devils. We'll parasitic treat the males, but for the females, more importantly, this is our first pouch check. What we could find is joeys between the age of 30 and 100 days. So we could see anything from a jelly bean to a bald, devil-like looking joey. Definitely, there's three, three yeah. joeys. Oh, oh yeah, there's good work, out. boys. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, little okay. head there. There you go. Oh, amazing. And that's that's from an early mating, probably February, because those joeys are about 80 days old. Ready to... Ready. Well, you see, they've changed from being pink to being a light white pink. And that's the, the next stage after that is they become furred. So uh, they're ready now. You could expect soon to have a couple of joeys on the outside of the pouch, still clinging to the teat, and then a couple on the inside as they get bigger. It's pretty good. Oh, it's pretty good. It's amazing. It sits out of the belly like it. you can tell straight away, can't it? Devils in a small pen in a zoo, a pair, they don't breed. They need this natural environment. This is so significant because now we can manage lots of devils cost effectively and help save the species. The good news has reached the Australian Reptile Park. There was a lot riding on that pouch check because it was possible nothing was going to be working right up there. But looks like at least seven out of 13 prospective girls have pouch young and it's a big sigh of relief. What a day, we've got the first devil joeys, uh, devil arc. It's just one step closer now to, to saving the devil and, and that is what devil arc stands for. And so the, the feeling that I get from that today, I don't think I would be able to get again. You've got a disease that is going to burn out the Tasmanian devil population and itself. It's going to be gone. If we don't have the animals to repopulate, uh, uh, we've lost the species forever. Devil Ark is a massive and long-term project and it's reliant on sponsorship. Now I hope that once people get to know the devil, understand it, they'll want to help it. And the devil needs it. <laughs>